What's up, internet? Your boy's been hella sick, but I'm almost caught up. Got one more to film before Friday when it comes at night comes out. This one's long overdue. I have to hear his voice again. This is your last chance to back out. Seal it. A Dark Song is directed and written by Liam Gavin. It stars Catherine Walker and Steve Oram. And it tells the story of a mother who, after losing her child, decides to hire a resident occultist to perform a ritual that will allow her to speak to her dead son. And said ritual involves locking herself in a house with said occultist for several months and not being able to leave. This is a film that I had been looking forward to. I heard very, very good things about it, and having watched it now, I totally see why. A Dark Song is one of the most unique, inventive horror films I've ever seen. It's not really like anything I've ever watched before, and I really appreciated that. It's a very different take on the whole ritualism and the occult subgenre, and it treats the overall ritual like science in that you have Steve Warham's character who is the only one who actually knows the ins and outs of all the ritualism explaining step by step how everything works and why things work in a certain way and so it was really interesting to see a film like that where it tackled something that we have seen before but from a completely different angle I really appreciated that this movie is really good I mean I really dug it there's a lot about it that was really, really worked in exceptionally well, and it's really helped by two fantastic performances from the lead actors, and really the only two actors in the film. There's a couple of other actors here and there, but they are so... They are only in the first 20 minutes, and even then they have like a minute of screen time each, and that's it. So right off the bat, this film really isolates you and makes you feel very cut off from society and civilization, much like the characters are. And once they lock themselves in that house, and once they seal off that house, it really ramp it ramps up and gets really tense and really unsettling and really claustrophobic. And that is probably this movie's biggest strong point, is the overall tension that it builds by having two opposing personalities locked in a house together for months on end. Especially when both of those personalities are somewhat unreliable narrators. You have Catherine Walker's character, Sophia, who is established multiple times early on in the film to not always be giving 100% of the truth to Steve Ram's character, who is borderline psychotic at times. And yes, he, it's understandable that he is very erratic and very on edge a lot of the time because the ritual they are doing is putting their very souls on the line. But... He is so, he's always on a tipping point, and there's always a chance that he could just snap when he doesn't like something she's doing, and it's really unnerving because you don't know what to expect from him, and you don't know if what she's saying is the truth, so it's two unreliable narrators in a house together, and it really, really works. The best words I could use to really describe this movie are claustrophobic and maddening. It's There's a lot of just completely in seeing things where certain scenes will repeat and certain certain things will happen that just make absolutely no sense and it really puts you in the mindset of these characters who are again they're locked in a house for months and it starts really having you as the viewer questioning the reality of what's happening and what's really there and what's not and who's telling the truth and who's not gavin really uses a lot of the space to his advantage in terms of creating the tension there's a lot of these very wide shots, but at, while they're wide shots, they're confined to the room, so you really get a sense of while what the characters are doing is very, you know, like, beyond them, they're still confined, and they're still trapped in this very, very tight spaces, and there's a lot of uses of geometric shapes on the floors that really give you the overall sense of intense isolation and intense claustrophobia, and... That is, like I said, this movie's strong point is that. This is a slow burn film. It's actually quite similar in terms of pacing and intensity to that of The Witch. And as somebody who absolutely adored The Witch, I thought this was a really strong point for the movie. 
it offers a lot of really thought-provoking insight to both human nature and grief and the overall darkness lurking inside of people, and I really thought that was awesome. Also, this movie is just really beautiful, and there's a lot of really gorgeous cinematography lended to by an incredible score by uh, Ray Harmon, who did a really good job. And again, like, like The Witch, it reminded me a lot of Mark Corvin's score in that. There's a lot of really dissonant string instruments, and there's a lot of bells and chimes and it's it's really it's it adds to this overall sense of mysticism and beauty and also dread throughout the entire film and i think that really really helped there are a few genuinely creepy scenes in this movie it, it, there are a, one involving a cigarette cherry which that gave me chills and then a couple scenes involving a child's voice again i'm not going to spoil anything because i feel that this movie is best to go in knowing next to nothing. While it does have those few creepy scenes, more than anything, it really just goes for the overall tense uneasiness of not knowing who to trust and what's real, and having being shackled up in the house with these two characters that really lends to an overall sense of just unease throughout the entire thing. While I don't dislike the ending by any means, I actually thought it's quite beautiful and uh, thought-provoking and really just absolutely, like I said, absolutely gorgeous to look at. I feel that it is such a sudden hard left turn from the rest of the film that it feels somewhat disjointed as a result. It doesn't quite feel like it meshes together, but it's handled so well that I can't be like, oh, I didn't like the ending. It's it's Like I said, it's a beautiful ending. It's a really gorgeous visually and sonically and everything it's really nice but it doesn't quite feel like it flows together with the rest of the movie also a couple of just little little things that bothered me nothing like crazy but there were a few scenes that i felt like just were unnecessary there's one involving a a, a cup full of human piss that it doesn't really amount to anything in the film it's there and it makes sense as to why someone's doing it in the film but it doesn't come to anything. There's nothing that comes of it. It's just there and kind of gone and nothing happens. I don't know how much of that recorded. I hope most of it did. My camera died. Overall though, I did enjoy this film. Like there, those few issues I had with it were not enough to really make me rethink any of my enjoyment. I thought it was really, really, really well directed, really well acted. The tone is fantastic. It really is just so unique and original and I have to give it so much praise for that. And I'm gonna say that A Dark Song is definitely a must-see. It's beautiful, it's thought-provoking, at times it's quite disturbing. Um, it's really just an excellent, excellent film, and I think that everybody should really check it out. While it might be a little too slow for some, it is a fantastically made film. And IFC Midnight, for all their hits and misses, this one was definitely a hit. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, and, you know, if you like this, you can click down there, and you like and comment and subscribe. Thanks so much.